ESPN. Tonight, anticipation has reached an apex. It is Rowdy and Raleigh inside Reynolds Coliseum, a top 10 showdown. Number nine, Oklahoma State. Still one who has made the trip here to take on fourth ranked NC State. It's the Big 12 taking on the ACC. And we are so glad to have you with us here. Just about a packed house for this duel. My cousins and Rock Harrison, we've been waiting a long time, and we've got top-ranked wrestlers at just about every weight tonight. I tell you what, this is such a great atmosphere. You have a top-10 battle, Big 12, ACC, All-Americans, national finalists, world medalists. It's all here tonight. I'm floating on anticipation, Mike. And all of those accolades you mentioned probably apply to the guy we're going to see in the second match of the night from Oklahoma State. You know it, Dayton Fix, he is Oklahoma State. He continues to wrestle and improve. The four-time All-American, three-time finalist, but he wants a national championship. Not just that, he wants an Olympic medal, and that's a gold medal. And at 197, you've got Trent Hively. It's the seventh straight year there's been a Hively brother on the NC State roster. He's bumped his weight up this year, and he's feeling better than he ever has. I tell you what, Trent Hively, up a weight class, still Trent Hively. He goes to his underhook, and he's going to stay in your face. He said he wanted to improve on wrestling and not cut it weight. And by seeing what he's done this year, he is getting better as a wrestler. 15-0 to start the year. His goal, bonus points, to help the Wolf Pack to a win here tonight. The evening starts at 125. Jacob Camacho and Troy Spratley, and then 133, a premier matchup. Dayton Fix and Kyrie. Traditional starting weight at 125 pounds here tonight in Raleigh. Jacob Camacho of NC State earlier this year was ranked number one before a couple of losses. Dayton Fix, the three-time finalist. And then from 41 to 57, Rock, it's NC State with wrestlers ranked third, fourth, or fifth. I tell you what, look at 149. You have our true guys that are, came out the same year, both blue chippers, and both know how to go hard. What an environment. Look at this. The walkout, the dark cloud, the fire. Yeah. A pyrotechnic welcome for the redshirt junior, Jacob Camacho, a three-time NCAA tournament qualifier. A few weeks back was ranked number one at the collegiate duels, had an 0 for 3 day. So his ranking has dropped. His skill level, however, has not, as he gets into it with 20th ranked Troy Spratley, the redshirt freshman. Spratley's going to come at him with a long, hard left stance. But then he shoots to the left leg of Camacho. And Camacho oftentimes has a square stance, meaning both legs are pretty much the same length and distance apart from each other. Spratley, a first-year transfer from Minnesota, was a red shirt last year with the Gophers. But five tech falls for him in his first 13 matches, the most of anybody in this Cowboys lineup. We're going to learn a lot about Jacob Camacho. He had three losses in one day when he was number one in the country. And Coach Pop Liesel said he, he's not too nervous. He's a senior. He knows what it is. It's a grind. And that's one of the things that Pop Liesel said has separated this year's team from his prior 11, especially, is just the experience. Not concerned about a guy taking a three-loss day because he knows that he's going to rebound from that, come back a better wrestler. Good job with Spratley. Continue to keep the pressure right on the come back up. of the shoulders, right around the neck area. You don't see anything really happening there, but it just wears your opponent down. And the officials here this evening, John Nath, and Mike Fredrickson. I like Spratley, he's controlling the elbow. And that's something that Oklahoma State does often, controlling elbows. Get out of that grip! And he passes it grip. to either go to high C, duck unders, but you can see up and down the lineup, Oklahoma State, they hold and control the elbows of their opponents. And both guys come in here motivated. Spratley lost his last outing as well. 5-1 decision against Jory Volkov, Wyoming in their duel. All right, Spratley is really holding center. He's, that's a good shot. He went right back to that high C we talked about, no control yet. 
but he's in a good position to get it. He's got the takedown. Redshirt freshman has been the aggressor, and he goes up three zip. Mike, we said that earlier. He steps hard with the left, and he shoots to the other side. He may get some bats. Good start by the freshman. As we said, we're going to learn a lot about Camacho, but this is how you start it off in enemy territory. You get a good takedown, and now you get a good ride on. Still 25 seconds left to work here in the first for Spratley. Short time, very important that Spratley keeps Camacho down. The three-point takedown makes a difference. You always want to end the period on top. And Spratley's doing a good job. He's, he's good job by Spratley. Wow, what a way to hang on for Spratley. He doesn't allow the escape and keeps the foot in bounds to end the period. The left. Right here, he's got the claw ride. Looks like he put the legs in. And at that point, he just had a good ride. He stayed tight on the hips and almost got some back points there. Really solid period by Spratley. His head coach, John Smith. Third most coaching wins in NCAA Division I history. And just 15 seconds in here to the second period, it's already a minute of riding time accumulated for Spratley. First point on the board for Camacho as he gets to his feet. In his last couple of matches, Camacho had problems finishing. He was able to get in on legs, but he had a problem finishing. Let's see if he's able to tweak what he couldn't do a couple weeks ago. And Spratley with that left leg lead, he may go back to that high C on the opposite leg, the left leg of Camacho. What does he give up with the left leg forward that Camacho could take advantage of? Camacho could certainly shift to that leg. I mean, it depends. If you reach with the leg that you're leading, you're not defending the leg. But what I like about Spratley, he's keeping right in the center. He's not keeping his, that's a, that's good defense. Look at that, that's nice. Chain wrestling right there. He has been swift and gets his second takedown. Spratley's looking good. <laughs> Here's what you have with freshmen. Once they start having confidence, they start getting really, really tough. They don't yet know what they don't know. Better than grip. That's Better a good and bad thing. Get out of here. But so far, it's worked out well for Spratley in his first true season on the mat with a 6-2 lead and short time in the second. Looking at Camacho, even the shots, the shots that he's had, he hasn't had any penetration. It's been kind of like just a, a reach as opposed to a penetration. Improve here. Work out here. Let it be a statement Shot. here for Oklahoma State to put points on the board before Dayton Fix steps out on the Three, mat at 133, two, and it's looking good one. with just two minutes to go. So he defended it, went to an underhook, and just threw it by. Threw it by great defense, and immediately he went to a claw ride, meaning he reached across the neck towards the shoulder and went for back points. And Rock, this year, takedowns from two points to three points, and the addition of the three-point near fall count as well has upped scoring, and we've seen in final results more tech falls because of that. And it makes for exciting matches for two reasons. One, you have to continue to wrestle. And number two, you're never out of the match. I like it. In the middle. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So we're in a position right now where Troy Spratley wants to get, obviously, an escape. And then to the point he wants to work towards, let's say, another takedown to work towards perhaps bonus points. So it looks like we had a little challenge with the clock. I think the issue that both coaches are looking at right now is the way that riding time is accumulating on the scoreboard. And rare is it that you see both coaches out with the same question for the officials, but that seems to be the case here with John Smith there in the front, Coleman Scott, the associate head coach behind him, and Pat Papalizio with the same inquiry on the other side in the NC State corner. Moreover, probably the only time they're ever going to agree this whole match. <laughs> so the riding time adjusted. It was uh, about 122 in favor 
of Spratly. And here's the issue. It was on the wrong side of the scoreboard. It showed up on the NC State side when it's 108 in favor of Spratly for Oklahoma State. So let's think about this. So this little break, who does it who does it help out? And you know what? You see Spratly, he's, he's giving a finger like, come on, let's, let's go, let's go, let's go. He's feeling it. And John Smith, one of the best to ever do it. Five NCAA titles as a head coach out of the 34 that Oklahoma State has. The most championships of any team, of any sport in North America, pro or amateur. Yeah. All right, so advantage to who here with the rest? I, I think Spratly, because if you saw his body language, he was giving emotion, like, come on, let's get it going. I got the mojo happening. I, I, I think it's helping the freshman. He's feeling good about himself. He knows he gets an escape. It's 7-2. A takedown, and now it's 10 to major decision area. An advantage because he gets his win back being on bottom, just trying to get out and get that point, take the five point advantage. And now the riding time down under a minute, but it's Spratly on the move. He went back to that high C again. And, and you see Camacho, he's just reaching. He's not really penetrating. He can't get back to the head and the hands defense of Spratly right now. I'm telling you what, Sprat Spratly is, is doing a good job, but I'm telling you, he's got to push towards that, that takedown. Spratly sprawling out, 105 to go in the oh, third, and Camacho oh, needs oh, points. Oh. There's a stall warning, the first against Spratly. The next is a point for Camacho. Camacho's no going to try and get his leg across no to probably put it on the opposite side no of Spratly. Oh. Watch that leg trying to get in. There it is. And Spratley's doing a good job of blocking. Did you see with that right leg? He was blocking it. He's still good defense by Spratley. Just, he's just waiting. He's got a good wizard in, but he's keeping that elbow to the knee so that it doesn't come through. And Camacho just said, get out of that. Good hold, John. It's now or never for Camacho. Trying to avoid a fourth loss on the year after being ranked number one just a few weeks Ooh. ago. This is going to be big time right here. No but good hits right now by Camacho. He no does not want to give up a takedown and give up bonus points. He's going to try and cut the corner. He's got his head up. Short time. Is it enough time? No control here. Three Spratly three was the aggressor in the first, and that carries through for seven minutes. A winner by decision. And the freshman in his first true season on the mat makes it 3 nothing Oklahoma State after 125. He attacked. He held center. And you know what? That's how you come in. The nerves of a freshman. He came in. He said, I, 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 I've wrestled with so many good guys in his, in his room. And he wrestled very well. Smart match. And didn't give up any, any big mistakes. We venture forward to 133 pounds. There are a lot of good duels this weekend. This is going to be one of the most anticipated in any duel, a top five matchup. Dayton Fix, a three-time finalist, going up against Kai Arini. The only time they faced off was the 2022 NCAA tournament, and Fix got the better of Arini. And Arini has certainly gotten better since then. Two All-Americans, they're not going to get shade. They're not going to get too nervous about what's going on. What they're going to do is wrestle hard, and what we're going to see is Ken can Kyle Arini change the momentum that's in Oklahoma State's flavor right now? Kyle Arini is the unofficial creative director of the Wolfpack Wrestling Room. This is him with some spray paint at the NC State Free Expression Tunnel. He's got tons of tattoos. Many of them he's done himself. He's tatted up friends, teammates, and when the time calls for it, he's also the team barber as well. Now he gets ready to take the mat. Francisco Isaiah Kailani Arini. In weight here, number five in the country. All right. Now, last year, Kai Arini was an All-American for the first time, finished eighth in Tulsa. And he told us earlier this week, Rock, he feels like he's a guy in the spectrum of the sport who has a target on his back. But that's not the case here. It's Dayton Fix with the target on the back of that orange singlet. Dayton Fix has had a target 
on his back since probably elementary school. He's been <laughs> good for such a long hands time. Up. And immediately he's, he's holding up. center. Off the face. I, I like what John Smith has done. He said, look, we want to make sure that we attack and keep our backs towards the middle. And while you see NC State so far, Orini and Camacho, their backs have been towards the out of bounds. Fix was accomplished on the international stage before he ever stepped foot in the wrestling room in Stillwater and could be Oklahoma State's first five-time All-American this year, but that's not why he came back at age 25. He'll be 26 by the time we get to Kansas City in mid-March. He wants to win it all after finishing in second place three times. That was a clean high C. Nothing yet. And they're out on the edge. Oh my goodness, I, I tell you what, it looks like John Smith literally came on almost to the red circle. <laughs> and he's gonna get the challenge break out and toss it right onto the circle. He wanted three points there on the edge. Now, as we've seen last year, it would have been just a hand touch. This year, it's reaction time. Well, what is reaction time? It's subjective to the referee saying that, I think in my view, control was established. So in that point, I kind of thought that eh, it could have been a takedown, but also if, if it wasn't, then it wasn't. But I felt in a high level, when you have two good wrestlers, the reaction time has got to get tighter. So there's a clean high C. So last dropped. year, the takedown is done. See, supporting points, I, I would say that's a takedown. I mean, that he's trying to reach back for the wizard, but that hand being down, that I believe that in that position right there, that it, uh, a takedown was warranted, especially when you get to that high level. When you, when you have high level guys against all Americans, that reaction time has got to be shorter. I felt that once he grabbed the legs and that hand was down, his weight was pressed forward on that hand. Therefore, he was subject to that takedown. After further view, the call on the mat stands. There is no call on the mat stands. So it wasn't necessarily the takedown. It was more so the out of bounds. And whether the action that would have led to the takedown occurred inbound. So we appreciate the explanation from the officials. And they're right back to it in the center of the mat. Watch your knee. Stop. Still me. This is what Kyle Rooney needs to do, get, to, get this fan base into it. And just a shot got the fans ready. They, they want to cheer. But Dayton Fix has wrestled all over the world. He, he doesn't get shaken by crowds getting loud. No, they're glad to have him back in the lineup after he missed some time earlier this year with a tweaked hamstring. He's in on a shot here against Arini. That's it. And there's the first takedown. He went right back to that takedown that got waved off. And he went right back to a left side high C. Ring control. Bring it right one, neutral, right one. Kyle Rainey was in on his leg. It's just with Dayton Fix, he has very gimpy knees. You got to finish with him quick, but you just can't stay below the kneecap because then he can just kind of just rub a knee and make it hard for someone to finish. I left my dictionary at home. Can you define gimpy for us? What I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Good shot. No control here. Arini's got a hold of that ankle. Green, take down. Oh, this. Six one Good fix. One. Arini back to his feet. His only points on the escapes. 30 seconds left, first period. Oklahoma State between the first two wrestlers. They're looking sharp. And, and it just seems like. NC State, they don't have that motion right now. Cowboys coming in here with some motivation. They're looking for, as a team, their first top five dual win since February of 2019, which came against then third-ranked Iowa. NC State number four Those hands up. coming into this action. And the end of the first Three, period, two takedowns two, for Fix one. and two escapes for Arena. Ah! So he went down to the high C, he went high, and then once the arm came down, he covered the hips for the takedown. And at this point, he put Orini in a dangerous situation and then just climbed up and did the same thing to get the takedown, and Orini did a good job of wrestling through it to get the escape. Six to two. 
Rini hoping to get back to the podium this year. And for Fix, it's trying to erase bad memories of years past going up against this competition in the weight class. Good, good job there. One escape. 7-2. This is where three point takedown starts to become more important. Takedown, you're in bonus points. And for those that are new to wrestling, bonus points is when you win between eight and 14 points. Little things, Mike. When, when Kai Arene kind of circles and stands up, Dayton Fix stays in the stance. He doesn't stand up with. There's that little slide by. That's that's Dayton Fix right there. Slide by inside trip. You, you can see that the Oklahoma State bench is ready to pop. And I thought you asked Dayton Fix a good question this week of whether he'd upgraded his arsenal basically, as people have known what he's going to do over the course of his career. It's more fine tuning. It's worked really well. Just not getting into the top of the podium where he wants to finish. Years ago, he would be able to hit that inside trip just off the jump, but now he has to set it up and get to one move and then get to the inside trip by setting up with another attack. Good shot. Heavy hips. When I say heavy hips, He's getting his hips all on the back and the shoulders of Kai O'Reilly. Dayton fixes. Going into the third period, 7-2. And O'Reilly's going to be, need to be more aggressive during these final two minutes. Try and get the upset for Pat Papalizio. One and six record against Oklahoma State. His former school between his time coaching at Binghamton, where he was for six seasons, and now in his 12th season at NC State. But Five straight ACG, ACC championships. It's been the Wolfpack and the Hokies at the top of the league. Stop. That's the first caution. You get two free Stop cautions, on, and then get on, get your on. opponent gets a point. And there's a second. So the next fall start will lead to a point go, go. for Arini if Dayton Fix jumps. Bring up. Still green. Not Still 30 green. seconds yet of riding time for Dayton Fix. How long can he keep a hold of Arini here to start the third? And as long as Dayton Fix has his, his hand across the hips and back of Kyle Arini, he's in control. We're working on a line, improve here. Mike, you've done the NCAAs many, many years. The big difference in becoming an All-American and losing is the fact if you can ride your opponent, keep them down. And Arini on the edge, puts his foot onto the basketball court, just inside the three-point line, and that'll send them back to the middle. So, at this point, it's 52 seconds of riding time. Eight more seconds. Good start now. Maybe on, a minute. Get on. Reno. Stacks on the extra point for Fix. We'll see, eclipses the 60 oh, second Reno. mark and effectively stretches oh, his lead to six points. So, Arini has got to get to it. That was important because now it's effectively eight to three. So, a takedown by Fix now makes it. A major decision. And let's see if he goes back to that high seed that he had. Hands up. Kyle Reed seems up. like he's been able to get to the legs, but that's that's about it. Dayton Fix is showing great defense. A little go behind. Look, look at this. So you saw that he did a little go behind. He, this is chain wrestling at its best. Beautiful from Dayton Fix. Now up 11 to 3 inside 30 seconds to go. And any time that Arini made a move, Fix had the counter. I tell you what, Dayton Fix is not showing any rust right now. That was chain wrestling. Didn't work, go to something else. Didn't work, go to something else. It was about four different things he did before he got the takedown. 
and he's getting ending the period with a mean right but can he get out look at this oklahoma state oklahoma state so bonus points for dayton fix at 133 with the riding time point the difference and after 2-8, it's 7-0. Cowboys, you're on the road. On the road in a tough environment. Dayton Fix, no rust right there. Looking good. Good job. Only his third Who's match the of the count? season after missing some time. And a great start with wins for Spratly and Fix. Spratly came out, beat a return All-American. And look at the elevation there by Dayton Fix. What a great start by Oklahoma State. 141 is next. Fourth ranked Ryan Jack. It'll be either Jamison or Sammy Alvarez. And at 149, Arrington, an AC finalist last year against Jordan Williams. College hoops tomorrow, and at sixth ranked Kentucky against Florida. The Gators, a host, they've won six in a row, but Kentucky has taken down Florida each of the last four times they've met. Kentucky and Florida tomorrow, 1230 Eastern on ESPN. Back here inside Reynolds Coliseum, number nine, Oklahoma State, number four, NC State. A decision at 125, a major decision at 133, and a 7-0 lead for the Cowboys, and we move to 141. Taking Jamison, the first-year transfer from Minnesota, a redshirt freshman, going up against fourth-ranked Ryan Jack at 10-2. He's been to the NCAA tournament each of the last two years and has the best ranking of his career coming into action tonight. And Coach Pop Lizzie was said that he's matured and bought into the system that they have. We're not going to say it's too early to say how important the match is, but Oklahoma State is going to roll. Ryan Jack needs to make a statement here. Good. Troy Spratley, Dayton Fix of Oklahoma State at 25 and 33, respectively. The aggressors in their the matches up. against Camacho and Arini. So what is the response from the home squad here? Jamison, he'll do an outside step to his opponent's right leg. And he doesn't really do a penetration. It's kind of a step and reach, almost like a snatch. But on Ryan Jack, you want to finish with him a little higher because his knees, once again, they're kind of rubbery. They'll twist. Jamison is a big 141 pounder. He was an Oklahoma finalist as a high school freshman. Moved to Texas, won two state titles there, and last year started off his career at Minnesota in Brandon Eggum's program. A redshirted there. Come on, and he's already picked up a here. big win this year. He's ranked seventh in the country, knocked off then fourth ranked Brock Hardy of Nebraska at the Cliff Keen tournament out in Las Vegas. This crowd is waiting for something to happen. Little things I'm seeing, just what Oklahoma State is doing, they are really doing a good job of maintaining center. Now, right now, you see Jamison, his back is to the outside, but for the most part, Oklahoma State, you see I just shifted just a little bit to stay right in the center. Those are the little things. And tactically, what's the advantage? One, it keeps you honest. It, it makes you uh, look like you're in a better position, stays in the referee's mind, and hey, my guy is staying right in the middle. He's not playing the edge. Come on, gentlemen, action here. And also gives you more real estate to work with. So if you shoot from the middle, you have all this space to work with. Mm -hmm. Spoken mm -hmm. like a former official, Rock. Former. <laughs> <laughs> Minute to go in the first. NC State, first three wrestlers, they're not getting their hips underneath them. They're kind of reaching with their arms and not getting their hips underneath them. Good shot there by Ryan Jack. Little dump action. Nothing yet. But it's working up in a good position to get the takedown. Nothing yet. What? Oh, that a move from Jamison to whip the legs out from underneath and get back vertical. Good job by the official not to give it. I would have worn three. That's why I'm not official anymore, because I'm not good. <laughs> that was good job by the official to hold that off. I'm telling you what, that Better than grip. kid is in, stalling against Oklahoma State. So, uh, 
that non-takedown, tell me where, if you watch it again, you would have put the three fingers in the air. I thought almost to that point, right there where his arm, his left arm was still underneath. Not in yet. But one thing that I couldn't see from my angle was that Ryan Jack's left arm was between the legs. From where I was looking, I thought his arm was around, but it wasn't. We don't Jamison with a marvelous move to spring out of that. And he starts the second on top with Oklahoma State looking to take victories in each of the first three weight classes. Looking to score. Green up. And there's our first point on the board. Coach Pablo said about Ryan Jack, his, his match against Mendez is a fantastic match with 6-6. And he said Ryan Jack wrestled a fantastic match until the last five seconds. 10 and 2, Ryan Jack of NC State. Both losses to Jesse Mendez of Ohio State. Goes hands up. Beat him by decision in Las Goes Vegas. And then their duel back on December 19th, pinned him. That was a really good match between both wrestlers. He's locking it up. He's going to run his feet. That's a takedown there. Three on the board for Jamison. He takes the lead. He did a good job. He got in and he locked and he stayed on the hips. Jack is out. Back to a one point difference. Pat Papalizio from the corner incentivizing Jack to go. Let's keep in mind that Jamison does have a stall against him. And, and Ryan Jack needs to, to pick it up a little bit, you know? Not just one shot. Let's see if there's a misdirection or, or a double up. When I say double up, it's one shot, react, and then shoot again. Similar to what we saw with Dayton Fix. Exactly. Chain wrestling. You see it again? Right in the center. You see... Jamison is staying right there, saying, you've got to come to me. And that also gets the referee off your back. The Pokes have been much more the hunter and not the hunted. Number nine team in the country. He stayed tight. He locked his hands right around the hips and got control. No question there. You're down. So Jack starts on top here. Down one, two minutes to go. What's his strategy? Well, at this point, Jack has to make a decision. He's going to try and feel out to say, can I ride him? Or, or is it just something I'm just going to hold him down for a little bit and, and work for the takedown? Jack, like his older brother, Kevin, are pretty solid on top. Kevin, a former Wolfpack wrestler, three-time All-American, in his third year on staff with the Wolfpack. Jamison's got to keep moving because at this point, there's an emphasis there's an emphasis on top stall. So Jameson's got to keep score. coming up like he is right now. And there's Kevin on the left. Volunteer assistant the last couple of years. Bumped up to a full-time role this year. And both men need to score. Both and at this point, Jameson's got to get his head up, head down on the mat. Doesn't look good. And so the, you can see the crowd. The crowd wants to get into it. They're going to, they're going to get into it. He's got to continue to work here. What a good job by Jack. Jack's looking at to see how much time I have to hold him down. He's almost at 30 seconds of riding time. This is big time. Stop. Stalemate. Stalemate. Stalemate here with 54 seconds. Even if he gets over a minute of riding time, that only gets him to 3-3. 3. 35 seconds riding time. Let's go. Get set. 3-3. Three, three. Let's go. Guys, need to work out here. But Get also, down. Jameson has a stall against him. But he's done Four a great job of not... Running out to out of bounds to use it out of bounds as safety. Right. The Woods of Iowa sitting atop the rankings at 141. First week of the new year. So if, if I was Jack, I'd be moving out to the side because right behind him, is, it's kind of hard control. to get a stall call. He's got to kind of move to the side, act like he's pulling to the side. But right now, he's just kind of hugging. So at this point, oh, right. here it is. Did he get the and Jameson is out. Nine seconds. 59 seconds of riding time. He needs a minute for the point. And Jack's got to be aggressive here in short time. That's, that's, high. that's high. He's going to try and keep him in. 
Look at the hips in. He brought the hips in. This is getting tight here. Short time. He's got to bring the baseball grip. He's going to start. Bring him in. Did he get it? He took a look at the three. He got it. And he got the three on the edge. He got the three. He keeps his foot in bounds. Three seconds to go. Toe is still in the circle. And the match is over. The late takedown wins it for Ryan Jack. That is exactly what this crowd needed. Tegan wrestled a good match. Ryan Jack just wrestled a better match. So at this point in, he has a baseball grip, trying to bring it against the two legs, against the takedown, and sets this place on fire. That is exactly what NC State needed just to bring this place back to where it is. Were you out of breath? Are you sweating? I'm just getting started. <laughs> I'm just getting started. Rock Harrison, the former ACC wrestler and NCAA official. And it's now 7-3. Oklahoma State in the lead over NC State. On to 149 pounds. A chance where NC State has a chance to cut into the deficit here. Third-ranked Jackson Arrington against 19th-ranked Jordan Williams, a redshirt freshman out of Tulsa. And if a Wolfpack fan, Rock is looking for reason for optimism here. Arrington, the sophomore from Pennsylvania, 11 and two on the year. Eight of his 11 wins have been tech falls. That's most on the team as they need to cut this four point deficit. Difference of styles here. Jordan Williams works in space, really good with duck unders. And since high school in Fargo, he's been known as the Iceman. Even late in the matches when he's down, he continues to wrestle through it. Look at the defense here by Jordan. Going to try to reach over. He's going to try and get an underhook. These two have wrestled in freestyle in the past. Work in the middle, work center, both men. But interestingly enough, the only folk style rematch that we were going to see tonight was 133. Jackson Arrington can't reach too much because I'm telling you, Jordan Williams is lightning fast. He lowers levels extremely well. Williams coming off of a red shirt year. And Arrington, an ACC finalist, NCAA tournament qualifier a year ago. That's what I was talking about, how, how he just lowered his level like that. Now he's got to shelf that Watch leg, trying to that. lift it up off the mat. Watch how you take that. So at this point, he's got to bring that knee up slowly. He doesn't want to bring it out. Here's stalemate. But just like that, Mike, you see how he just lowered his level real quick? That's, that's over on the stage. Lower your level and get into a leg. Work in the middle. That was what made John Smith, John Smith, a lightning quick, low single. You know what? People talk a lot about his low single, and it was revolutionary. But he really had a good high C as well. What do you mean past tense had? <laughs> you can take us all down. No control here. Jackson Harrington has got to bring that leg up. No control here. Patience here by Jordan Williams. He's not panicking. Nothing has happened here. Both these guys are experienced. Even though they're, they're underclassmen, they are experienced. Nothing. Good defense there by Williams. Williams wrapped on to the left leg of Arrington, preventing him from coming around. Stop, stalemate. Stalemate again. Easy. And the Wolfpack corner really Jackson wants Arrington to push the pace. 40 seconds on the line. On the line. Loved his composition when we spoke to him earlier in the week. 
two losses this year, and he said, I can't be mad about losing. When I come back, review the film, I'm bound to be a better wrestler, and I can never be disappointed with that outcome. And that's coming from an underclassman. Another good shot. Now he's got 20 seconds to work something out here. Now Jordan Williams may try to roll through. Now he's got the leg hook. Now he's, at this point, Jordan Williams has got to keep tight because if that right arm comes out for Jackson Arrington, he's going to get that takedown. He's got to get that right arm out. If that right arm gets out, he can get it for Jordan. He gets it free, and with one second left in the period, that secures the three for Arrington. The Oklahoma State corner trying to say the clock at it's zero. But when the when the hand went in the air, there was still one second left on the clock. They already used their brick, so at 133. So we're gonna look at this situation. We were trying to get that right arm out. The leg is hooked. Where's the three is up? And it's definitely before the zeros got up on the board. Just watching the countenance of the coaches in orange tonight, it seems as though in the last couple of weights they've said, huh, we wish we had a brick again. <laughs> they don't, but they do have a 7-3 lead. Jordan Woods got to keep attacking. Likewise is Arrington. Arrington needs to go back to that under because he's able to get to the legs of Jordan Williams. Williams and Orange, a great wrestler in his high school career, three-time Oklahoma State champion. Man, that's quick. Now Double. Arrington weighing down on Williams. Little thing, Jordan Williams had a high seat with his head on the outside, and what Arrington did, he did like a windshield wipe. He took his left arm and took his head like a windshield wiper and wiped it to the inside to push the head down. This just shows you how good high school wrestling is. That these guys are wrestling as if they are seniors. Arrington himself, three-time state champion in the wrestling hotbed of Pennsylvania. Work out that grip. You talk about high school rock. He said it was a huge adjustment coming in last year, being a starter. And the mindset had to change. In high school, you're going to face guys who you're going to run over easily. And that's not going to be the case here at the Division I level. Certainly not with the schedule that NC State puts together where they fear no one and welcome all comers. No control. Oh, Good defense by Williams. No control. Once again, he's got to bring that leg up. He's going to probably no try to get across the waist. But great balance by Jordan Williams. And Arrington's going to try to limp arm and get the takedown. Once again, for the second straight period, it's a late takedown for Arrington. Short time, let him look here. Short. Keep that arm down. Short time, ending the period Keep on top. And magnificent work there to use his body weight to leverage Williams down to the mat, who is just trying to keep himself in a tripod position with his hand in his head. Now he he attacked it. You see, he's stepping across and he attacked the wizard. Sometimes when people have wizards, they want to go away from it. What Arrington did, he attacked the wizard, and when he attacked the wizard, when I say attack, he went to the wizard, it gave him more leverage and broke the effectiveness of the wizard. This looks like the best first five minutes that anybody from NC State has put together here through the first four weights. Momentum. When you come off of a big win like they did at 141. Get him off. Adrenaline. All. Get him off. And you can see the difference right there. That takedown at the end of the second period. Arrington, he lost to Dylan D'Amelio of Ohio State earlier this year. And he said where his faults were, were moves on the edge. He was too timid. He was worried about being taken down rather than securing the takedown. Oh, looking to score. Those changes have been eminent tonight. No doubt. And what you're seeing tight. is tight, good time. mat wrestling. And, and those that wrestle in the state of PA are very good and known for top wrestling. Top 
the mat wrestling. And this is this is this is a, a good ride. Continue to put the pressure on it. Not much Jordan Williams can do with his arm behind his back. So green. And a stall warning against Williams. Seven nothing in favor of Arrington, plus 90 seconds of riding time. So an effective eight nothing lead, which would be bonus points for the Wolfpack and tie this duel up. needs a restart, but right now, Jackson Arrington, third period, really That's putting the pressure. Here. Here. Williams working to the edge there. <laughs> you saw Oklahoma State, they looked at Jordan Williams and said, we need one, just one. This last 25 seconds is going to be a sprint. Yeah, sprint meaning that Jordan ready. Williams is going to do everything just to create space. And certainly what Jackson Arrington is going to do is try to slow him down and secure something to ride him out for the last 25 seconds. Good job. Lace the ankle. Jordan Williams still working here. He's got a hold off of dear life. And Arrington just won't let him go. He's going for more with five seconds, two swipes, and it's 10 nothing with time to celebrate at the end for Jackson Arrington. And the duel is time. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a duel. One decision, one major decision, and then the other team, decision made decision. Jack right there, last second takedown. And look at Arrington, mean ride. We are tied at seven. Up next, 157, Teague Travis, the son of a college wrestler, shares the first name as an OK State great. And Ed Scott, an All-American last year, only two losses on the year. tomorrow on the ACC Network. NC State coming off a thrilling last second win earlier this week at Notre Dame. Their only lead was with .6 seconds to go. It's Virginia Tech and Florida State. And then 14th ranked Duke, one of three top 25 teams in the ACC. At Purcell Pavilion, 6 Eastern, tomorrow on ACC Network. Mike Cousins, Rock Harrison back here with you inside Reynolds Coliseum. First two matches went the way of the Cowboys. They took a 7-0 lead with wins by Spratley and Fix. Ryan Jack with a last second takedown, got NC State on the board, and then Jackson Arrington with a decisive victory, a major decision. And now we go to 157. It's Teague Travis, number 23 in the country, who is 9-1 against fifth-ranked Ed Scott for NC State. Scott coming off the first All-American season of his career, was fifth in the country last year. And Rock, he's only lost twice, both of those in sudden victory this season. And when asked about the team, Coach Smith said he's, he's tough. Now, T, Travis has got to be careful because Ed Scott likes to go underhook. And underhook oftentimes lead to headlocks. Action on line, men. Work center. Action here. And an early stall against Travis. Work in the middle. Stall for backing out. Would you ever want to see that be a point? You know what? I, I've had conversations, and, and one of the things that that was brought up was perhaps having having the out of bounds, the backing out neutral out of bounds. Maybe have it as something Improved outside the stalls, here. like the cautions. Don't know if that will happen, but sometimes people are hesitant to call regular stalling because they don't want someone to back out. All right, we're working in the middle here. Yeah. Both sides, both sides. Both sides are going to reverse this. Good quick defense by Ed Scott. No control here. And one of the things that Travis did, he tried to stay no center. As Ed Scott was trying to get an angle, get Travis Let's stayed right in the middle Work of up. his chest. Work in the middle. Watch 
Car listed. G. Travis opened this year at 149. Since bumping up to 57, he's 4-0. Oh. Last Working year, in middle, wrestled center. in open tournaments, a red shirt before that, coming out of two different powerhouse high schools, Father Tolton High School in Columbia, Missouri, and then finished off his career at Stillwater High School, one of the best in the state. Good low shot by there. No Travis has got to get to get his head Watch that out scissors, now. Keep illegal. Little, little tough situation, looking for neutral danger. Neutral dangers when danger one. little roll through action by it's got neutral dangers when the one of the wrestlers from a neutral position, their back is over 90 degrees. Stop, and the official will give a count. What happens if a neutral danger? Neutral if you're in a neutral position and your back is breaking 90 degrees, the official will make sure it's been established and then he'll say danger and say the caller who's danger and then make that three count. So Work a lot of people think it's three seconds, here. but when you add up the time, it's really a little over four seconds. Improve here. Ed Scott is resting a pretty hard pace, but Travis is doing a good Work job line, of, of holding against someone that's returning All-American and, and continues to move forward. Short. A really good year, year last year for Scott. Finished 24-9. Now, two years removed from an ACC title after last year he lost in the conference semis. Pat Papalizio, 12 years in, they finished in the top 20 at NCAAs for nine straight seasons, and the last two years, 10th or better. And from 2015 on, Brock, you know how impossibly difficult this is to be in the NWCA top 10 in all of the polls since Green. December of 2015. Green. Not only is it difficult, but he came into NC State without any real wrestlers that, that were there to build. His first year was heavy walk-ons. Oh my goodness. So he really built this program. He didn't inherit a program that had lots of blue chippers. He got the blue, blue chippers to come in and believe in his vision. An assistant at Sacred Heart, and then Army, and then American, head coach at Binghamton, and now NC State after wrestling for John Smith. It's a good shot there by Travis. He's got a chance. He's got a chance. Ah, he went to the waist. When you go to the waist, you take away the effectiveness. It's so natural that when you get a shot, you want to go to the waist around the rib cage, and that just helps with the wizard. The wizard is kind of like an overhook. So you reach that arm back and just kind of hook it. That's a wizard. Stole Another shot again. Now that's a stall Stole call red. against Ed Scott. One on each side. No control. And I agree with that. No control. He's going to try and get his head out. Ed Scott is holding tight. You see he's sucking it no in. And he's trying to get that leg out. Or oh, neutral dangers. He's in a good position to get a takedown. Travis is in a really no strong control. position. He's got to get that right arm out. No control. That right arm has got to slide out. And Ed Scott is holding tight. Nothing yet. Look at the defensive. Looking for neutral danger. No control. Nice scramble here. And Scott has done a great job to avoid the neutral danger. But there, after hard fought work from Travis, is the three as he takes the lead. And that was hard fought. Short time, very important that Teague Travis stay on top. Short. Big time takedown by Teague Travis here. And he leads it 3-1 after two. Pat Papalicia, one and six against Oklahoma State as a head coach. And we talked about he's facing his mentor, John Smith. His college coach, going back to the beginning of when they started to square off, Papa Lizio said, you're just trying to show the work you've done, but the longer you've been around, it becomes just another duel because he knows that John Smith, 33 seasons in, is the longest tenured coach in the sport, is just as competitive as a coach as he was as a wrestler. That has not changed about John Smith. So decisions need to be made here by Ed Scott. How long is he going to try and keep T. Travis down? He's down by two. T. Travis is continuing to work up, and he's getting a reversal. I tell you what, John Smith said this Travis, he's tough. Man, this is good. Stop. Up 5-1 with 1.27 to go. 
And it's putting some life back into the Oklahoma State corner. Yes, they, yes, they are. They, they are, they are really just willing Travis to continue to wrestle as hard as he is right now. Because if Travis gets a win here, that sets them up to feel really good going into 65, where they've got the number two wrestler in the country of Isaac Olenek on deck. Work center! Going back. Travis is wrestling a really smart match here. Not putting himself in bad positions. And it seems like every time that Ed Scott goes to reach, he's doing a sweep single. Sweep single meaning outside. Uh, he went to that again. He shot for the right leg, and then he went to the left leg. This time, Ed Scott has good defense here. Now he's going to look for a cradle. Right in time, not a factor. And it's tied up on the takedown by Scott. Here's willpower. Whose will is stronger? Is it going to be the will of Travis to get out? Or is it going to be the will of Ed Scott? It looks like Travis has got the reversal. Travis does it again. Two more. 30 seconds left. It's short time. Teague Travis. Coach Smith said he's tough. Mental toughness is not just as important. Look at this. He's got a wrestle smart. Short time. Is that going to be magic in Reynolds again? Teague Travis. He's going for it. Snap down. Spin behind. T. Travis is going to upset the All-American. Yes, he has. T. Travis hangs on and by one defeats fifth-ranked Ed Scott to get the upset and vault Oklahoma State back in front. Good, hard wrestling. T. Travis, probably the biggest win of his career. These guys wrestled really hard. As I said earlier, here it is. We're looking for the cradle. And at that point, it was all, am I going to give up? No, T. Travis said, no, I'm getting out. I don't care how. It doesn't have to be a move. I've just got to move. And at this point, Ed Scott gets a little high, and there's the reversal. And that seals the match. Look at that. And he's going to look at him. He's going to stick the tongue out. <laughs> oh, it's it. like he's watched a match or time or two in this building. 10-7 at the break. Oklahoma State jumped out to a 7-0 lead. The Wolfpack equalized, and the Cowboys up by three after five. A big sports weekend concludes with the college football playoff national championship game. Michigan and Washington, both teams had their semifinals come down to the very end. Monday, 7.30 Eastern, ESPN. Michigan's last title, 97. And Washington all the way back in 1991. At the intermission, a top 10 matchup. Oklahoma State with the lead, 10-7 over NC State. Back here in Reynolds Coliseum, we're glad you're with us. Mike Cousins, Rock Harrison, John Smith, the head coach of Oklahoma State in his 33rd year. It's the longest tenured head coach in the sport. And because of how successful he's been, how long he's been coaching, almost 10% of Division I coaches wrestled for him in Stillwater. That's just absolutely ridiculous. But John Smith is a legend, not just a legendary wrestler, as an Olympian and gold medalist, but he's also a fantastic coach. And you can see his coaching tree all over the place. People that he's wrestled with have been influenced by John Smith. He is that good, so good, he had people leave and come back just like Coleman Scott is to make a statement and make a difference at Oklahoma State. Coleman Scott was forged in the heat of Pennsylvania high school wrestling and continued to excel at a high level coming to the Oklahoma State program which has won more national championships than any other. The Cowboys won a team title his first two years. In his final season, he won a national title with a pin less than a minute into the match. 2012, London, he wins Olympic bronze, was part of two team trophy finishes under John Smith. Went to North Carolina one year as an assistant, replaced C.D. Mock as the head coach, helped lead Austin O'Connor to become their first national title winner since the 1990s, and after eight years at the helm with UNC, returns as the associate head coach, where one day he could take over and be the next head coach at his alma mater. And I tell you what, Coleman Scott is Oklahoma State. His style, his intensity, and the fact he does lots of things like John Smith. John Smith feels very comfortable with him as an assistant and an associate coach. And I tell you what, they're set up for a long duration of success if they keep someone that's a talent as Coleman Scott.
and they're feeling really good about who they've got wrestling at 165. The portal friendly to the Cowboys. Isaac Olenek, the All-American, coming over from Northern Illinois. And then at 174, could go anybody's way. Braden Thompson and Alex Faison. Back here in Raleigh, and it's the ACC on ESPN on the campus of North Carolina State University inside Reynolds Coliseum. It has been a fun first five matches, a three-point lead for Oklahoma State. Mike Cousins, Rock Harrison along with you. Things can really turn here, Rock, at 165. Because Isaac Olenek, if you may not know who he is, he is good. And he's the biggest favorite of the whole dual meet. And I tell you what, Oklahoma State not only wants to win this one, but they want to put up big points, and Alex Olenek can certainly do that. Ranked second in the country, and 165 has been a platoon weight this year for NC State. Olenek not wasting any time. Gets the ankle on A.J. Kovacs. Go get that joint. You see how he's that keeping that really high leg right in the armpit. By keeping it high in the armpit, it's very difficult for anyone to limp knee or you kick out. And you see a little thing, he brought him back to the center. When you bring him to the center, you have more real estate to work with. Finish your improver. <laughs> Holman put, Scott calling for the trip. And, and Isaac Lennon, his dad was a coach, so he knows, let's, let me look over to the corner and to see what can be done. But Kovac's doing a good job here. He's just being patient, he's not panicking. He's trying to goal. keep the distance by putting his hands away. Improver. And although it's been a platoon at 65 for NC State, Kovacs has been in the starting lineup quite a good bit this no year. Started seven of their no nine of their ten here. duels coming into this action. The pack action fourth in here. the country at nine and one. Oklahoma State four and zero, oh, ranked take, number nine. Stop. That battle was actually won by Kovacs. Within five seconds, Olenek had the leg in him, and Kovacs said, "From bringing it up in the air, brought him down to the mat and earned the stalemate." And that's usually for a Lennox, but for most guys who are able to shelf that leg, a pretty good finishing rate. You're right, especially with someone as tall and long as a Lennox. A Lennox transferring in from Northern Illinois out of the MAC. Last year became an All-American for the first time, finished eighth at the national tournament in Tulsa. Won his second conference title. Spent a little bit of time in the portal and decided that his future would be best fit in Stillwater with a legendary coach and a legendary program. Work out his tires and prove. Olenek feels very comfortable in the uh, collar tie. Stalemate, let's go. Up. Stalemate, meaning no one eye. was improving. Work out. Olenek's racked up some big wins already. Champion at the Cliff Keen. Took down Dean Hamity there, number four in the country at the time, and also has wins over Cam Amin of Michigan improve. and Julian Ramirez of Cornell, both guys in the top ten. <laughs> Isaac hasn't really gone back grip. to that low Get shot that he had fingers, in the fingers. first five seconds. And Kovacs is doing a good job of holding center. Kovacs in on a shot, part of the train of guys who have come down from Danbury, Connecticut, along with Camacho, Ryan Jack, Kevin Jack, one of the assistants on this team. And by the time for the fourth year sophomore, it came time to choose a college. He said, I'd been down here so many times, felt like a second home for me. Three, two, easy. Three, two. One. Tomorrow it's a women's college basketball triple header. If you've never seen South Carolina play, there's no better time than tomorrow at 1 Eastern on ESPN. Dawn Staley's squad has already scored 100 points or more five times this year and route to a perfect start. LSU on a 10-game winning streak into their matchup against Mississippi. And North Carolina coming off a top 25 win takes on 16th ranked Notre Dame. A hundred points five times, that's, that's a lot. Don Staley knows how to win. So do both of these programs. Top 10 in Oklahoma State, the most decorated program in the history of the sport. They've got a 10-7 lead after a Teague Travis victory over Ed Scott at 157.
25 and 33 went to the pokes, 41 and 49 to the pack. Olenek looks works well in space and he, he's he goes. Oh, that was really, really slick. That was slick. He said he was very good in college high. He snapped and then shrugged it by and followed to get the takedown. That was smooth. That was really smooth. Stop. The goal Adam here, though, stop. Rock, is not decision for Olenek. It's bonus. Still with three minutes to go. And Keegan O'Toole, who has since be, uh, being okay. a freshman in college wrestling, yeah, has taken man, top, top guy on, the, the sport by storm. And in this top five, he's, I don't know how you handicap it, but I'd say any of those guys are equal odds for a title. Oh, absolutely. I think Julian Ramirez has made a statement out in Vegas when he upset David Carr, because everyone gets assumed it's going to be David Carr and Keegan O'Toole in the finals. But Isaac Olenek said, I, I want to come to the Big 12 because that is a deep weight class in the conference and in the nation. You know, 125, you just roll the dice and <laughs> any given week, who knows who it's going to end up being. Jacob Camacho of NC State, who fell in the first match of the night, was ranked number one earlier this year, came in today number 17. Isaac Olenek, he, he, um, you want to win. That's always the number one goal is to win. But he, he said to us Three, on our two, on our Zoom one. that he realizes that he's supposed to get bonus points. And you start to wonder what's going through his mind. Is he saying, look, what, what's going on? How come I'm not doing this? What's happening? But the number one goal is to win. In the middle. Four to one. And this was a weight where Pat Papalizio, the NC State head coach, said, I want to see how the duel is going as to who he was going to throw out there. They've also got 18th ranked Derek Fields, who started three of their duels this year. And they give the nod to Kovacs, who's the only wrestler not ranked in the top 33 in any of the weight classes today. It's only 4-2, Mike. I mean, this is, this is a lot closer than, than what the pundits would have said. Including myself. I was going to say, you're a pundit. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Number two wrestler in the country, Olenek, with a two escape advantage. Tucked his head, defended it, get behind. Nothing yet. He's got to get that arm out. He's got to kind of shake that arm out and pop his head. No control. The hip is down, and there's the takedown. So the score, the score seven two, almost right in time. Right in time makes it eight to two. Does he let him go and work for a takedown? Let's see. They're looking at the clock. What are they thinking about? They're saying they're, lit, they're yelling. Oklahoma State. They're trying to tell him what to do. All right, let him go. So at this point, Isaac Lennon is now convinced that he could get this major decision. It's seven to three, but really with the right incline time, it's eight to three. A takedown makes it 11-3 major decision. And here's the sprint. And it'd be 14 points rather than three. Oklahoma State up 10-7. Slide by. Can he get it? Can he bring him to the mat? Nothing yet. Nothing. He's still got that wizard. If he's going to lift that leg up, he's got to keep that wizard. Nothing yet. That was close. That was close. But... But no, no brick, no brick. Oh, you they used it, it at 133. Yes, they and did. It's, it's odd to see where you have a corner and they won, and Oklahoma State is less than pleased about it. John Smith was disappointed because they didn't get the takedown call in his mind quickly enough on that last takedown there from Olenek. That's true. That's true. And Rock, you and Sean Kenny are going to be with us Friday nights. Duels on ACC Network. That January 26th matchup, the February 23rd one, have greatness written all over them. Every single year, 
If you're doing something on February 23rd, scratch it out, watch the ACC Network, and continue to watch NC State of Virginia Tech have a fantastic battle. Well coached, and these guys, they're not fans of each other either. So we go to 174. Braden Thompson, the freshman from Frankfurt, Illinois. Winner of three straight after starting out 0-3. And Alex Faison, 8-5. Last year was his first in the starting lineup. Now his sixth season in college. We're going to pull the Wolfpack closer here with just four weights to go. The team score is not right. Oh, who does that? I'm asking him to. Who does the score? The pause that you see right now is the team score has not been adjusted. It listed as 10-7 Oklahoma State, and after the win by decision for Olenek, it should be 13-7. And Olenek won that match, no question there. But you wonder, in the short scheme of things, did did Kovacs really do his job in keeping it to less than a bonus point decision? We'll find out at the end of the match. Work out of here. Thompson and Faison. Faison, like work out. highly recruited blue chipper. Faison, a six-year senior. And Thompson, for being an upper weight, he moves very well. This is a spot similar rock to 125 with Troy Spratley for the Cowboys. With Thompson, who can be aggressive because he came in, we just said 0-3 start, now has rattled off three wins in a row. And he said those were eye-opening losses for him because as a high-level high school wrestler, wasn't used to losing hardly ever. And so he knows from those defeats, it's gonna take him more discipline to be successful at this level. You take it a step further. Going into the wrestling room, you still have to take your lumps and your bruises. He made the move from high school Improve in the state there. of Illinois for his Work final semester to go to Stillwater High School in Oklahoma. Stop, stalemate. Not an uncommon move for guys who end up going to Oklahoma Look State because that's <laughs> one of the handful of best programs in the entire state. Work on that grip. He's on in red, NCAA tournament competitor for the first time last year. Had to wait his turn with a really strong roster of upper weights. Come on, gentlemen, work out these dominated the, the ACC at NC State over the last few years. Watch the headlock. Now at this point, Faison has got to get off of the, uh, the rib cage and get his hand lower. Right there is a strong wizard for Thompson. He's got to get his hand off of the rib cage. Action. When your arm is around the waist of the rib cage, it makes the wizard of the opponent that much stronger. You've got to get that arm lower, and so it takes away the strength of the wizard. But as Faison was going for a cement job, an underhook with a half Nelson, Thompson was about to throw a headlock. Close those fingers and prove here. As Kovac, excuse me, as Faison starts to reach a little more, you have to be careful. Braden Thompson has a good low level. High C. From the underhooks, 30 seconds in the first, no score. You may say, what, what is Faison Action doing? It's just kind of pulling here, him down. This wears you down. The first period, it may not score points, but it certainly makes it more tiresome as you get longer into a match. And that's definitely part of the strategy coming from Adam Hall, the associate head coach in the NC State corner. You saw him just push the head down, didn't do anything. Just, just let me just wear your shoulders down. No matter the sport, it's always hotly contested when Ready Florida up, and Kentucky up, square off. And that's the matchup tomorrow, 12.30 Eastern on ESPN. The Gators, the host, 
They've won six in a row, but when Kentucky has taken on Florida, it's four straight wins for the Wildcats. Number six, Kentucky and Florida tomorrow, 1230 Eastern on ESPN. You see the twist that fades on hands of his body? We don't. He saw that one. twist. <laughs> Off trampoline springs for the first point of the match here at 174. Get out of there, I want to see Thompson get to his attacks. He, he's really good at offense. Good at freestyle wrestling. What we're seeing right now is called folk style wrestling, which is more control. Freestyle is what you see in the Olympics. That's more about positioning. And Braden Thompson is obviously good at both. For guys who have success at freestyle, what's the biggest carryover to folk style? When you're very good at freestyle, you have good awareness of your body. Because of your awareness of body, you should be good in folk style because it's all about positioning as well. Get up that throat. But the biggest difference between freestyle and folk style is folk style, mat wrestling is, is supreme. Same good defense by, by Faison. When I say defense, he's just keeping a good stance, keeping it low, bangs the head with the right arm, and stuffs that underhook with his left Come arm. On, gentlemen, work on the arm. Improve here. Improve here. Watch how you lock it up. You, you can see the NC State crap. He, he's trying to wear that head down. Every time he gets to that underhook, if you look at the coaching staff, they're saying bring him to the mat, bring him to the mat, which is going to try to wear down. We're down Thompson. But if he keeps pushing in like that, Thompson can lower his level. Not just like that. Now at this point, he's going to try to bring it back to center. And he's going to get to a point where he's going to try to do a baseball grip to bring him back in. Nothing. He's got to be careful kind of reach and bring him to the mat because as you bring him to the mat, just like that last series, Braden Thompson has a good offense. Adam Hall, the associate head coach for the pack, just yelled head on head to Faison. I don't think he sat for the last five minutes. <laughs> I'll get you going. I'll get you going. Oh, Both teams know how important this match is. Coach Papalizzo said, uh, I asked him, hey, Coach, if you were the producer, what match would you really focusing on he said this match right here because it's guys that haven't really made their name in the nation but could turn out to be the most important match of the dual meet and we're seeing it one to one 145 left that was sneaky by you outsourcing your own work <laughs> And one thing that you see Thompson doing, he's using his left hand to grab the tricep to control that body. So don't be surprised if you see him shoot to the right leg of Faison. It's been a lot of setup for Faison. Can he turn it into points as they're tied at one with one minute to go? Six-year senior against a freshman. Freshman is in a hostile environment, doing a decent job, not getting overwhelmed. Watch the duck under here by Thompson. This is, this is what you call just an ugly, grimy match. And this is where Faison wants to be. He's not going to wow you with all the offensive arsenal, but he's going to be right in there in a phone booth and get dirty. Inside 30 seconds. The question here is, are you just going to say, I'm going to wait to go to overtime or, or see if sparks fly? Thompson's got to clear himself from that. Watch the shot. Well, they've been getting to the underhooks and getting stuck there. So they'll go to sudden victory tied at one. Sudden victory. Two minutes sudden.
drive in victory, any points scored, not a takedown, points. So if it's a legal hold, something that just scores any points, two stalls, it doesn't matter. And if they stay tied, it goes into 30 second alternating positions. Now who wants to get wild? Crowd as loud as it's been without any scoring. Braden Thompson, you gotta watch him lower his level. He lower. Now, the problem with that is Faison, he's reaching and keeping his hips high. Action so if he's gonna try to do a shot, he's got to keep his Action. hips tight. The second time he done that, so Thompson may feel it again. This 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 is the type of match that Faison wants. Just I'm gonna wear you down. I'm gonna continue to move forward. No He's on back to his feet before Thompson can finish it. Oh, both, 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 both coaches staff knows how important this match is. This, this, is, this is important for the duel. 55 seconds, sudden victory. And these guys are gassed. Oh my goodness, yes. The difference is Faison has been in these matches. The sixth year for the pack against the freshman for Oklahoma State. 35 seconds, sudden victory. Man. This is training now. Training. When your body doesn't want to do it, your mind is telling your body, keep going, keep going. And this crowd needs to get loud. They're too quiet. Fingers, shoulder, work center. I like, I like the, the posture of the freshman. He, he's not rattled. Three, he's still two, wrestling smart. He's one. not doing anything foolish. Now, we go to 30 seconds. The referee flips the disc. Someone's going to get a choice. You have choice, Red. NC State gets the choice. He says, I will defer, meaning I don't want the choice. And at this point, Braden Thompson goes down. 30 seconds of continuous action. So whoever scores, it could be Faison, it could be Braden Thompson, it doesn't matter. You gotta keep rushing the whole 30 seconds. And riding time does make a difference. He's tight, Faison, and almost out. He's out, he gets the escape. Inside shot, but he's gonna get around. Look at the hips here of Braden Thompson. He's going to try and suck that leg in. Perhaps look for a cradle. Look at his strength here. He's going to look for the cradle. Look for it. And he's only look got two for seconds. It. Look for it. He got it. Time expires. Oh, what's the call? What's the call? There was none. You got to talk about that. What are they going to say? They're talking over. That was a big deal. Nothing was signaled. So this one want to go to look to, to the video. They're going to go to the video. Big time, big time call here. The question is, you can see it coming. You saw that Brady Thompson was going for the inside of the leg, and then he clamped the head down, put him on his back. So they're going to say, this is an official's review. The officials are say, no, 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 no. We want to make sure that we got the right call. So at this point, it's under hook. Faze on his holding, and watch Brady Thompson slide that right hand underneath and locks in for the cradle. Right there, that's... The, what we don't know is when time was out. There's no, there's no doubt that he locked the cradle. The question that they're looking at right now is the cradle was it established before time ran out. <laughs> and John Smith is... Before, we, we can't see it, but look at it right on it. He's around, hips are broken right there. That, that's, a, that's a close, close call. And w without the time, it's hard for us to, to, to determine that. So lifting that arm, at this point, that's when you know that the cradle is coming. But Faison can't let go, because if you let go, he'll be giving up a takedown. Th that is a takedown. The question is, was it before time? And we, we just don't see that right now. And I look at the same thing right now. Okay, so this time, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at this with the clock. So he's sitting, locking the cradle. I'm going to say, take down there. Man, that's close. 
That, that's... So... And if the standard to overturn the call on the mat is indisputable video evidence, they say they don't have it, and the call on the mat stands. So it's a one-point advantage <laughs> for Braden Thompson with the escape. So now Faison's got to get to his feet, break the hold here to even things up in this 30-second period. Drama personified. The freshman, can he come in and beat the super senior with a good ride? Can he do it? This is, this is gonna be tough. You don't want to roll here. Cause now it's just, just bundled up. At this point, can Faison, this is good. This is good for Braden. Challenge brick thrown from the NC State side. This is very good for Braden. Nothing, he's still holding up. Short time, we got 10 seconds. Hips away, hips away, hips. That's he one. Is out. They are tied. Seven seconds to go. So now the brick thrown early by Pat Papalizio. And so, riding time makes a difference here. So at this point, <laughs> this is how important this match is. You throw your brick, and they're gonna, he said, looks like with the indication of the official, they're looking at whether they're locked hands. Now, locked hands, if you bring it from the feet to the mat, there is reaction time. However, if you lock your hands while on the mat, there is no. So the brick came out, but that was after the fact that they're, they're questioning locking hands. So we, we can't we can't see what happened there. But clearly, clearly Coach Pablizio said locking hands. So standing up, back there. The hand. Now, the question is, when that left hand went down, were the hands locked? We can't see. Because if the hands went down right there, that would be locked hands. Man, this is <laughs> such an important match. All right, so he, uh, the hand was down, but we, if we can go back and just see a little more there. So they're, they're looking to see in that sequence where the hands lock. So around stepping down, Nothing, the hand is down, are the hands locked? I don't, I don't see it. I saw that right hand on the inside of the thigh, and I saw the left hand around the waist. I didn't see it. After further review calls, the call stands. There was no locked hands, therefore. That's it. Oh, is that over? Did, 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 oh, does he win it? Right? Yeah, yeah. No locked hands. And so, by virtue of the riding time advantage for Braden Thompson in those alternating 30-second periods, he is the winner. And now it's 16 to 3, Oklahoma State after 174. That's a freshman right there. <laughs> is it? That, that, that's is a it? freshman. I'm telling you right now. It, the composure. I, the, the composure of the freshman to not get rattled, to not say, let me rush something, to get the riding time. That is a well-coached freshman. Isaac Oletic does what he's supposed to do and win. And then the freshman, poise, wins. And we'll tell you now, we got a good match coming on. Lots still to come. Both wrestlers in the top 10 at 84. And at 197, the Heidly Mania continues with Luke Serber on the other side. Triple header of women's college basketball starts 1 Eastern on a Sunday. Mississippi State and top-ranked South Carolina. Just yesterday, LSU had a dress like Kim Mulkey day and some great outfits at the Maravich Assembly Center, LSU and Mississippi and North Carolina, Notre Dame, 5 Eastern, ESPN2, Sunday. Mike Cousins, Rock Harrison with you here at Reynolds Coliseum in Raleigh, 184 pounds. And NC State really needs this one, down nine on the team scoreboard in a top five matchup. Third ranked, Dustin Plott, 14 and one on the year. The senior against the redshirt freshman, Dylan Fishback. Both wrestlers are, are, are feeling the, the pressure, so to speak, uh, of the moment. Platt knows that he needs to, to get a win to 
to not say it's impossible, but to make it extremely difficult for NC State to win. And, and then you have another freshman knowing that his team needs him to come through for them to give that a shot. Plot dominant this year. Six wins Those by fall up. are the most in the lineup. And he's coming off of a second, sixth place finish. Two-time All-American here at now 184 after his first three seasons spent one weight class below. Dustin Blatt has a very good sweep single. All the Oklahoma State Work wrestlers here, do a good job of lowering their levels on their shots. Good hips. No control. My plot. No control here. NC State head coach Pat Papalizio really excited about Fishback being healthy this year. He was hurt first semester last year. So second semester, summer, where he took on a ton of improvement. And he showed that even in a loss earlier this year. He faced top-ranked Parker Kekeisen in the collegiate duels, held his own. Just a 5-2 decision for the Panther of Northern Iowa. That he did. Parker Kekeisen, he, he's a man on a mission this year. Better that grip. Still kind of filling each other out. And 16 to 7 on the team scoreboard. A victory here for Plot would make it very difficult for NC State to try and come back and win this thing with just two weight classes to go. That was a quick shot. Now, once again, they said bring him back to the center. Just like Isaac Olenek did at 165. Fishback has to try and bring him back to the center. Did he get the two? Three? He did. Right before. Hand went on to the basketball hardwood to stop the action. And that's why they wanted him back toward the middle, but he collects the three points anyway. That's a quick little shot there. Quick low shot, and he finished it. And even though the coaching staff said bring it out to the middle, Fishback finished it on the edge. Push back out of Aurora, Still Ohio, in. the greater Cleveland Great area and the northeast part the of the state. Another hotbed Three, for one, wrestling, along with the neighboring Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. On that We're shot that Dylan, excuse me, We're that uh, Dustin Block just had, it was defended well by Fishback. And what did Fishback do? He lowered his shoulder to defend it. Sometimes when you put that arm down, people can shoot through the arms, but he lowered his shoulder and Plot couldn't get through. Lots of film study there. Twenty. And they say that Fishback is not afraid to lose. And that's part of what makes the redshirt freshman dangerous. Sixteen. Can he fend this off here? Short time in the first period. Good job. And what happened with Dylan? Excuse me, with Dustin. Here's a low shot here. Watch his lower level and got low and stood up. He didn't wait to try to fight to get off. And at this point, the coach was telling him to bring. And what he did, he didn't necessarily trip. He used his foot to kind of hook it. I'm seeing that more and more now. People aren't just trying to swift swim with the foot. They're trying to just catch the ankle or the heel. Still red. Hands are up. Right to their we feet. Plot looking for his seventh win against a ranked opponent this year. First 15 matches, 13 of them, he's collected bonus points. That's what his opponent needs here to get the Wolf Pack back in it. Good shot no there by Plot. Now he's going to try to get his other arm out and get the takedown. It's almost there. There's the takedown. Now at this point we're about to find out how tough Plot is on top and also what Fishback is able to do on bottom. One of the hardest things that young wrestlers have is getting out from underneath. Why? 
because usually in high school, no one's able to ride this guy. When, when, when you're in high school, you're usually a better athlete, you're stronger, and many times, ooh, that's, you saw him grimace there. But in high school, you're just better. No one can just hold you down, but when you get to college, it's just different. He's got the arm on the back and goes to an arm bar. Arm bar or chicken wing, whatever you want to call it. Good series there by Platt. From an official's perspective, what do you look for from the top wrestler when he's trying to improve position? A lot of times, is he trying to break him down to lead to something that puts him in position to get near fall? One point escape and a one point match. Right back in is Platt. That's a good job. And good. He circles around the edge for the late takedown. You said it, Mike. Late takedown. He didn't say, let's go to the third period. Plot kept attacking. Come on, son, stand up. Dustin Plot, oh, oh, oh. the senior, sixth place right finish twice. Red take Last year, his second hey. straight Big 12 let's championship. Go. He's moving up. And as we'll talk about at 97 with Trent Hydley, guys generally tend to feel better when they've got a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to weigh-in time. Red takes bottom. Red in addition to, to that, this year too, a two-hour weigh-in time hours Get active here, man. has Get allowed active for more here, recovery man. leading toward the start of the match rather than the prior one-hour weigh-in. I, I, I'm so happy when guys go up and wait to concentrate on getting better as a wrestler. And it makes me wrestling fun. We don't have to worry about what can I eat, how much can I have, what's in my diet. Good shot, same thing, but heavy hips by Plot. My goodness. Hips are almost on the mat. And that just puts a lot of pressure on his shoulders, so Fishback needs to get his hips underneath him. This is where three-point takedowns really make the difference. Eight to five. A takedown worth three, fans. And Rock, if Plot wins here, the lead is 19-7, it's 12. That means in the final two matches, NC State would need two pins. Now, the good hips there by Plot. Good hips there by Plot, but look, look at this, this takedown, nothing yet. That's the three. It's 8-5, what are we gonna do? What do they wanna do? They said they're gonna bring him out. It's one, he's gonna try, he's gonna count. What is it? So let him up. So here it is, one minute, here it is, 9-8. Let's see this happen. Let's see what happens here. Both are shooting at the same time. Let's see the magic here. Good job by Plot. Plot goes down, looks for the shot. You gotta face him, you can't run out. Nothing yet. He's gotta get that leg out. There's nothing, nothing. He can just stay there, he just waste time. He just, that's, a, that's nothing, he waved it off. Plot's gotta just slide him back in and then just attack. Slide and attack. There it is. That may have iced it. Improve here. One, that just may have iced two, the match. Three. It's more than a takedown difference at this point. 12-8, 13 seconds to go. And at 184 pounds, it's experience that prevails as the Cowboys get a win by decision and extend their lead to 19-7 with two weights to go. Well wrestled match by both wrestlers. And we said, it, it was the experience. Just knowing, and it was that edge mat wrestling. At the end of the period where you could have said, you know, let's just go to the next period. What did Plot do? He attacked. You always are rewarded when you attack. Coaches love when you attack. And when it pays off, you'll keep attacking in the future. Ah, getting a little squirrely, Mike. You're getting a little squirrely. Huh? Well, at first it was Hayden and then Trent. The seventh straight season, there's been a Hydley on the roster at NC State. Trent 15 and 0 and a three time All American getting ready to take the mat. And in the era of NIL, it's not just money, but the name and the image, the likeness, a Hydley hoagie at Mitch's Cavern. Here in Raleigh Rock, you got turkey, pepper jack, mayo, lettuce, tomato, and for you, some jalapeno jam on the side. That's right. Because you're ready to dig in. 
I, I'm, 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 I, I'm the chump when it comes to spicy food, so I gotta dip it just a little bit. I mean, it was good. The owner, Van, came by, and he's a big Wolfpack fan. He, he loves wrestling, part of Titan Mercury Wrestling Club. Then he kicks out, you wave it off, and then he grabs it. They love wrestling here in NC State. Rock, a change in the lineup, and this may be indicative of where Oklahoma State is scoreboard-wise with two eights to go as they call on the freshman Jersey We're Rob to step in here out. for Luke Serber. Work out. And we know that Serber was, was nursing an injury. Yeah, he got hurt and has missed their last three duels, an injury at the Cliff Keen Las Vegas. Action in, both men, work center. Work in. And, and what a tough position for Rob to come in to a guy that, that is absolutely relentless. All right, stay in, work center. Stop, let's get off that line. So a 12-point difference here. Pack in need of pins at this point. Put 16 points on the board, both here at 97 and at heavyweight. And Trent Heidley capable of doing that. 87% bonus rate is the highest of his career. And I was fascinated as the stall call there goes against Rob. In our conversation with Heidi, not only is he happier than ever, moving up weights this year to 197 from 84, calling it a really enjoyable move, that he said his expectation is for bonus points every time out. He knows that the coaches won't say that, because they don't want to put too much pressure more, on him. But as a guy who's now the steward of this program from the athlete side, time. he knows that's the expectation, unspoken yes. or not. And what what you'll see with uh, Heidley, he does an underhook, and some people call it an Iranian. He has another stall call. And here's the thing. It, it's Coleman Scott being the former coach, head coach at UNC, he knows what Hiley does. And even at that point, he, he doesn't get upset. He's like, that's what he does. And until you feel the underhook and the pressure, it's hard to, to understand how difficult it is to get out of. Goes right back to it. At this point, Rob has, has got to circle Both men like are that. Center. Even Both if it's men. not a victory for Rob, is the goal here just avoid getting pinned? And you don't say that to, to your wrestler. You say, go out there and compete hard. But in the back of your mind, everyone knows. In the middle. You know, if, if I don't get pinned, we definitely seal the duel. Nothing. No control. So Rob's no doing control. a good job of pushing that down. He gets two legs, and that's the three-point takedown. Heidley goes to work for more on the edge. And if you think that Trent Heidley is going to slow down in the second or third period, you're sadly mistaken. Rob is doing a solid job. He's defending the underhook. It's Three, very much the experience two, of, of Hydley right two, now. One. Keeping the pressure on, but he knows what the job is. The job, the job is Second to get break, take a fall. Well, he said this Five is the first six. season since 2018 that he's wrestling Three. without his brother Hayden on the same Three. team. 
Hayden now an assistant coach for Obi Block, the first year head coach at North Dakota State. In a flurry of off-season moves, where Roger Kish, the head coach for the Bison, became the head coach at Oklahoma. Pagrat there just getting to his belly is a victory. Yeah, he felt himself going in, and immediately he bellied out. And so you wonder. Is Trent going to continue to, to try and work with me or just let him up and, and go for underhooks? Down to one. And try to two. Down take his feet to back or, or look for another stall. Technical falls do nothing in terms of the dual meet. Tech fall only five team points and they need a pin for six to put them within six going into heavyweight. Stop, bro. When it comes to the Hydley brothers being a part this year as well, Trent said they've still got the house they lived in. Their older brother Keith lives there. The difference is now when the parents come visit from Pennsylvania, they don't have to get a hotel. They can stay in Hayden's whole room in the house. Green up one, you're neutral. Minute to go on the second. That underhook, it, it, it's not your typical underhook. It, it's, it, it's not just. It's not just holding, he's looking for so much offense from there. It's not just being bullying. If you respond one way, he does something else. 30. And no doubt, Rock, the guys in the lower weights felt pressure to get off to a good start, but it's got to be a different type of tension here for Hydley, knowing that a pin is what he needs. Mm -hmm. 12. 12. And. and Rob is, is doing what he's supposed to do. He's, he's, he's presenting himself. He's not stalling. He's trying to continue to wrestle hard. And he knows his job is to avoid at all costs a fall. This is a weird spot to be in because another takedown, the match is over for Hydley, but it doesn't Stop. get what you need. Back off. Right. That's me. I'm getting anxious. Get on. Highly said that he, he likes to be at the end of a match to when the pressure's on him to perform. Three one. He's doing, he looked at the math, said, okay, it's three points here. Three, two, one. Stop. This is what we're talking about. Throws the under and then just goes and just kind of just drives through, reaches across. And gets a takedown and we'll go to live action here. And Hydley gets an escape to make it 15. Three drag down. Get all those fingers. So the question now is that do, do you looking at the coaches, staffs, and 14 difference. 14. I got you. And 17 to 3. Does he let him up? Not going anywhere. No action hey, center. And if he lets him up. Understand that if he takes him down, he has to immediately put him on his back. He can't take him down and try to put him on his back. He's got to take him to his, from his feet position immediately to the back. Because if he does not, the match is going to end with a tech fall. And Oklahoma State is going to get out of Raleigh with a well-earned win. And the Cowboys looking for their first top five dual victory since February 24th of 2019 against Go Iowa. Back. Go back down. It was a lean year last year, Rock, for Five Oklahoma State. State. Finished 18th at NCAAs. Didn't have a national champion. Their last title winner was A.J. Ferrari in 2021. And he hasn't been heard from since. I haven't heard anything about it. Nothing. Right on. Pretty strong here, man. We we'll to improve, both men. Right on. So he lets him up, understanding that up, he neutral. has to go feet to back. There it is. Technical fall for Trent Hidley. However, the match has been secured by Oklahoma State.
Judge, 7, 19, 12. We saw Platt yeah. just wrestle a very smart match the whole time and earned a tough match against a freshman. And Trent Hidley does what he did, but a tech fall was not enough because Oklahoma State has secured the duel. And just heavyweight to go on the schedule. Two top 20 wrestlers to close out a great night at Reynolds. Friday night duels, ACC Network. It gets underway January 26th. The phenomenal showdown between NC State and Pitt. Rematches between that for the real showdown that comes your way right here. NC State, Virginia Tech, the two titans of the ACC. Titans indeed, they compete hard. They don't really like each other too much, but they respect the fact that they wrestle hard. And NC State winners of five straight in the ACC. Heavyweight is all that remains, and it's Connor Doucette coming off the first top 10 win of his career in their bedroom matchup, and Owen Trapp at number 16 in the country, an ACC champion a year ago. 19-12 is the team score in favor of Oklahoma State. Barring anything wild and unexpected, having locked up the dual victory, Oklahoma State trying to improve to 5-0. and NC State would drop to 9-2. and uh -huh. Looked around the course of the Night Rock. First two matches went Oklahoma State's way, and the closest that it got for NC State was after 149. The sophomore Jackson Arrington got the win, and the match was tied, and after that, it's been five straight victories for the Cowboys. They've wrestled very well, very well. No rust, and after last year's NCAA championship, uh, Coach, Coach Smith was very honest that some things needed to change. And what they've done on national TV against a very game NC State at Reynolds Coliseum. Pat yourselves on the back. Oh, excuse me. Cowboys? Yes. <laughs> I said poop. We were just talking about Virginia Tech and the Hokies. And the Pokes for Oklahoma State. That was interesting having that conversation with John Smith as well. Year 33 as a head coach. What you've done has been successful, but it's a changing environment when it comes to transfers. And they've done well in that department, getting Isaac Olenek in, an All-American from Northern Illinois, but also NIL. And finding people who are going to be benefactors of your program, because like it or not, that's the reality in every sport. You have to recruit twice. Recruit to get high schoolers to come to your school, and recruit to keep people on your team. And it's recruiting every year at the end of the season. It's not, all right, here's what we've got coming back because these guys still have eligibility. Once the season is over, it's a flurry of players going into the transfer portal and trying to find their next opportunity. Which are to blame guys for trying to take advantage when for a long time the head coaches have exercised that opportunity freely and willingly. One minute. We've seen a change in heavyweights over the years that uh, they've become more lean. There's still some big heavyweights, but they all move well, meaning that they have offense. They can take shots as Fingers. opposed to just We're going ahead, over Chris. and under and just pushing and prodding. These, these heavyweights are athletes. And Treffin for NC State had a really nice season last year. Reached the round of 16, only had two regular season losses. Mason Paris of Michigan and Yaroslav Slavikowski of Harvard. Good snap down. We're working center, action both men, work center. Sure. For Doucette in the orange. Last year his first as a starter and Three, into the NCAA two, tournament for the first one. time as well. So Oklahoma State, the historically dominant program, on track to improve to 8-1 and one all time against NC State for the first time that these two teams met since 2018. Man, keep working here. In a slightly different working, location last time they squared <laughs> off. Because they wrestled in Italy. And the hope was to do that again this year. But for a variety of logistical concerns, that trip did not come to fruition. It's been a great atmosphere here inside Reynolds Coliseum. Right. And you look at the schedules, too. And you have this conversation about 
if there were going to be a national duels competition, which a lot of people do right clamor for, one. but to try and go overseas, coming off of your break, coming off of big tournaments, and then going right into ACC or Big 12 competition, that would be a lot to make that move over to Italy for this duel. And most people enjoy trying to make weight in an environment that they're comfortable with. You think about food as well, what certain foods you can eat and may not be as available when you're international. No, oh, it should be easier overseas. Everybody says you go to Italy, no matter how much pasta you eat, you just walk it all off. <laughs> Get out of that grip. Out of that grip. Probably the easiest for these guys, though, who may weigh in anywhere from 230, 240, all the way up to the cap of 285. But it's not the case for everybody. Two guys come here. to mind in particular, Sammy Alvarez on Oklahoma State, who did not wrestle today, but transferred from Rutgers because the cut was really hard for him, down to 133. And Kyle Rini, the 33-pounder for NC State, told us the same, is that, yeah, I've done it now for three years, coming down from 141, it's not easy. But it takes discipline, and I know that's what my team needs me to do, because they've got Ryan Jack, who's ranked number four at 141. Even Dayton Fix said that, that, that making weight, he's got to keep his weight a little low because he has international aspirations. So he can't get to a full size 33 pounder because he has to get down to 57 kilos as he looks to make an Olympic team. Olympics coming up 2024. I was saying that like it was the future, but it's 2024. <laughs> and that'll be in Paris, where just a handful of Americans have qualified thus far. End of the third, Three, second period, two, moving to the third one. period. Stop. Ref is going to take bottom. Get set. All right, boys, keep working here. Get set. In the middle. Oftentimes when it's the match is out and, and you say, you know, what is there really to wrestle for? There's a lot of pride. I, I want to win regardless. Still green. Good rider here by Oklahoma State. Still green. Pushing forward with tripod to stand up. Mike, I've seen that a lot. Before, people just try to stand up, but now they, they take their time, try to seal out the elbows, and do kind of like a tripod, and then work their way up, and then stand up from there. It's good when you have lots of time, but if it's in the ride outs and overtime, you may not have enough time to do a tripod. Looking for a hat, Nelson! Good pressure here. Who's set in control, 90 seconds, third period. As they're out by the scorer's table. Oklahoma State with a win will get to 5-0 and all with dual victories handily over Bucknell and Lehigh in their Bedlam matchup against Oklahoma and then Wyoming next weekend. They're going on the Backyard Brawl Tour. They're going to take on Pitt on Friday night and then West Virginia Sunday at noon. NC State's getting on a plane tomorrow. They're right. going up to Long Island. They're going to take on Hofstra, 11.30 Sunday morning. We're working here. Break them down and prove both men. Doucette is going to try and roll through again. He's trying to get that ride in time. He's got 20 more seconds. Doucette has now laced the ankle. Doing his best to get there. He's going to keep them. 13 seconds. Doucette's trying to get this. This riding time point. Come on, man. Come on, man. You're on. Stay in bounds. Let's go. Get in bounds. And Treffy knows he's got 13 seconds to really get out. Let's go. He goes right to a stand up. Looking for. Good job, Abu Seth. He's just keeping the weight forward. Almost there at the riding time. He secured the one minute. Why is that important? Because that's an extra point that you may get at the end of the match Stay if you have more than one minute of riding time. Damn it, no action center. And you can, you can look at like that. the no Oklahoma State fan, fan base and, and look at look at the team. They have a lot of pride. And this was a good win for them. Green, you're on. The enthusiasm 
despite the contest no longer being in question, has not waned from that side. Pretty much everybody on the Oklahoma bench is standing up. They, they want to win this. Well, actually, we're not talking about winning the duel meet. They want this heavily match. And Trevor's got to go hard. Right in time, the advantage right now for Doucette. Short time, third period. Mark Sutter. Doucette is doing a good job. Just getting good defense. Circling. Go green. Stall warning on Doucette. Mark Sutter, you've been warned. Stay center. And I'll Two. tell you what. Oklahoma State came into Reynolds, came into Raleigh, and made a powerful statement. Last year was last year. This year, Oklahoma State is showing the nation that they are force and they'll be reckoned with. So back in 2019, they knocked off the Hawkeyes when they were ranked third. And now, here in 2024, they come to Raleigh and take down number four, NC State. By a final score of 22 to 12. They won eight out of the 10 weight classes. And Rocket started off with Spratley, the freshman, Fix, who's 25 years old, will be 26. He was a winner by major decision. Arrington comes back, gets the win. Jack with a late takedown. And after that, six straight victories for Oklahoma State to close it out. And they were gritty wins. We're not talking about blowouts. They were just good, solid wrestling. Overtime matches, upsets of all Americans in a hostile environment. That's good coaching. And it looks like it's going to be a good 2024 for Oklahoma State. 141, the weight class, was a great example of why you wrestle all the way to the whistle. It was a time where it looked like Jamison was just in control, but Ryan Jack is experienced. He's been in the program long enough, and there is baseball grip slide in. At this point, this was what Reynolds needed. Pop in the area, wins it with no time, but that was it. At this point, Oklahoma State started to settle down, and at 157, big upset with Travis beating the returning All-American, Ed Scott and did a good job of getting a reversal at the end to close it out on top and get pumped. And then he gives a little tongue action out to the crowd here. Travis, biggest win probably this, this season. And then 174, a true freshman versus a six-year senior. This was the escape and almost the cradle at the end, but that wasn't enough. Time had expired, but it was the ride at the end by the freshman. Good job by Braden Thompson. Good job by Oklahoma State. Wrestling tough and smart throughout the whole match. Devotion to accuracy department. Oklahoma State did not sweep the back half. Left out Hydley's win. The Tech fall there late. He was disappointed, though, because he didn't get the pin. But nothing to diminish either team here today is NC State number four in the country. They're nine and two. They're ready to get into ACC action. Their eyes on Virginia Tech and the rest of the league as Oklahoma State next weekend takes on Pitt in West Virginia and then dives into Big 12 action. That's what we want. We want to have good wrestling and you win some, you lose some. It's a grind. All season, it's a grind. You're going to have to work. You're going to have some bumps and loses, losses here and there. But moreover, what are you learning? Are you improving? Even in losses, you can improve. And I think both teams are going to go back to the, to the drawing board and say there's some things we did well and some things we need to improve on. And I expect them to have a great NCAA championships in March. And we'll have that for you on ESPN from Kansas City. Anticipation was high and the temperature higher inside Reynolds Coliseum. Oklahoma State goes on the road and picks up a 22 to 12 win over NC State. From producer Todd Coolis, we say happy trails to our director Justin Stoll, my partner Rock Harrison. I'm Mike Cousin saying thanks for watching and so long from Raleigh.